Uh, I'm Rupert Cobb. I'm from a studio down south near Lewis called Gunhill Studios, which is a large infinity cove with two motorised turntables on it. We've got two uh, stages, basically a white one and a black one, and green screen. And you know, we can we can vary it to whatever we need on the shoot. Uh, and we're going to be talking today about the new Eva one from Panasonic. I was looking for, uh, I, I've shot a lot on the Varicam and I was looking for something with a, a smaller footprint because we get a lot of shoots last minute. We do a lot of work in the car industry and I get a lot of opportunities that are very much at the 11th hour. So I was looking for something like for the other, the other day we went to uh, Ireland to do the announcements for the Irish Rally Championships uh, and uh, it was all hand luggage so I was able to pop this in, the back, in, in my backpack and, uh, and travel light, which is always great. The other advantage of the small footprint means that I can get shots in the cab of a car that I would not be able to get with a Varicam, because you just wouldn't be able to get that, 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 that angle. And also, it's light enough to use a lot of those uh, little add-ons that are coming in the DSLR world, so you can use a little slider. At Gunhill Studios, we use a lot of different cameras. Um, I use the Varicam for various things. I, we shot, I mean, a few years back, was involved in the production of uh, Life from Abbey Road with Peter Van Hook and we shot series two entirely on Varicams. Uh, I was looking for something smaller for when you don't have the facility to travel with that level of kit um, but would also cut with the Varicam which uh, this little baby uh, does beautifully um, so uh, and it's small enough to fit in a backpack when traveling abroad which is fantastic. Um, it's got a lot of the features of the Varicam, uh, but at a fraction of the cost. Um, so it's got the dual ISO, but on this camera the dual ISO is 800 ISO and 2500. Very useful in low light conditions, also useful when you're doing slow-mo. Because a lot of people forget that when you uh, um, shoot at a higher frame rate, you need a hell of a lot more light. So what I do sometimes is I shoot my standard frames at 800 ISO, native, and I shoot my high speed at 2500 native. That way I don't have to change the f-stop a lot, I don't have to change, uh, uh, introduce any, any more noise, uh, and that works really well. Recently uh, I'm, I've started shooting a uh, motor music show we're making. Uh, we're doing a six part series which will be shot extensively on the EVA. Uh, we've, we've shot the beginnings of it with uh, Mustangs, and what were we shooting the other day? We were shooting, uh, oh, Shaw Speed and Custom Harley Davidson. In fact, we'll put some of that footage up online so that you can see the results. One of the key things is really interesting with the whole Varicam uh, Vlog codec is it beats some of the other brands considerably on color tones, especially skin tones and reds. Reds are always very, very difficult. So um, uh, when you're shooting a Ferrari, you've done stills of a Ferrari. Sometimes we do, for the same client, we'll do stills, uh, a book, a movie. And the, the color of all those has to cross, translate across the different uh, uh, mediums. And we, um, we, I found the Vericam very good for that. And this uh, also translates to the um, EVA very well. The other thing I love about it is it's modular. Uh, virtually everything on it, like this handle, you don't actually need this handle here. If you don't want this handle here, you can just pop that off. You can put the viewer on the, on the top of here. You can take the handle off the other side. You can make this camera like kind of half the size if you're traveling um, or if you want to put it on a gimbal. So it's um, light enough to fit on the, on, on the gimbals that people are using with DSLRs, which is, uh, which is brilliant. Lens-wise, uh, it's an EOS fit. Uh, I think that's a very wise move. It's a Canon EOS fit. That means it fits pretty much all the lenses available to Canon. It also means that you can, if you're on a tight budget, you can get little adapters for the EOS mount to use old lenses. I use a lot of 80s Carl Zeiss lenses sometimes. Um, not just because you can cheap pick them up cheap, but also because the glass is really good and also because some of them have a very small footprint. And my, my thing is I, I find myself interviewing where I've got to be really subtle. So being able to have, like, I've got a, an Olympus um, um, 28mm f2.8, this literally tiny, tiny thing. And when I take everything off this body, I was doing this last night, I can, I can shoot from the hip with something that doesn't look a lot more than a DSLR, but shoots at true 4K. 
And when I say true 4K, not ultra HD, proper 4K pictures that match really well with, uh, with the Vericam on a 422 10-bit codec. A lot of what we're shooting like um, needs a, a, a large dynamic range because although we have the luxury of an Infinity Cove and we've got 24,000 watts of tungsten downlight uh, above the cars we're shooting, I still don't like to add that many auxiliary lights. Uh, because they all end up in the reflections, this, that and the other. It's nice to just keep to that downlight. So um, the V-Log is really handy for that. You've got 14 stops of dynamic range and they're true 14 stops. It's not um, a boast that you're going to have to deal with mountains of gain with. Uh, so uh, we shoot V-Log pretty much all the time. But interestingly, you can shoot V-Log while on the, on the monitor. You can have a 709 so that you can have some confidence of what the end result might look like. You can in fact have different codec outputs on the monitor screen and the BNC and the HDMI. Uh, interestingly, there's a few more things coming in the upgrade um, so that we'll be able to shoot RAW out of the HDMI 5.7K, which is great. Uh, it's also got image stabilizing built in. It's digital image stabilizing, but, it, but that kind of technology of that has moved along a hell of a lot in the last few years. So it's not something in the past I would have reached for. But as you say, if, you're, if you find yourself in a situation where you need that to be handheld, having that little bit of extra stabilization in the camera is great. And the stabilization uses the 5.7 sensor to, to still give you a 4K um, footage. So although you're cropping in, you're not cropping in any less than, a, than 4K of... Uh, of um, pixels. And a, a great little general purpose lens is the one that's on here, the, the 28 to 70. Uh, the L series lenses, I would go with the L series Canon lenses if you want to use Canon lenses because uh, the 4K uh, picture quality really does benefit from that. And, and on the Canon lenses and autofocus lenses, you can assign one of the buttons on the side to, to have a one touch autofocus. Um, so you can still use that. The other really cool thing on the Panasonic range, which has come down from the Vericam, is the focus squares uh, that get larger when you're more in focus. Far more useful than peaking, because peaking's either in or out. Whereas with the squares, as they get larger, you know you're coming into focus. And if someone is walking into a shot and those squares are steadily getting larger, you know they, they're coming towards focus, so you might not even have to touch the lens. Key decision was being able to have a Vericam codec on a camera that's small enough to get in a backpack. Uh, that, the dual ISO, I would say as well. There isn't another manufacturer that's got that down like these guys have. So you can go to, if noise is a real issue, you can, you can go to the 2500 um, ISO native and come back down to 1000, you know, and, that, and that's really, really cool. And, and the button layout on this is to die for. I went to uh, try and assign a load of buttons, which I would normally do straight away, and they're all there. There's neutral density filters. There's some areas, I hate to say that, because it's more modern than the Vericam, it's got the edge on the Vericam. It's got, um, we've got mic pre's on the side with gain controls where you can see them, which a Vericam hasn't. You have to go into menus on there. The uh, infrared filter is motorized and built in, so you don't have to get a screwdriver uh, in, in the middle of the African desert to try and, try and change when the sun goes down, which is great. Yeah, I think that's about it. To see more of our work, we, we, we do uh, uh, try and operate a very open house at Gunhill Studios. So I will constantly try and share everything we can. We, if you go to Gunhill Studios, you'll find our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and all that. And if you have any questions, always happy to share stuff. Uh, if I've got an answer, I'll, I'll help. Lighting and various things. We were talking uh, a couple of days ago about lighting. People were very keen on lighting cars. The one thing I would say on that is you never point anything at a car. Always bounce light. Bounce light is always better. And, and all the rules that apply to sound, I'm a sound engineer, I've mixed, I mix live from Abbey Road and loads of other uh, music productions. Uh, and all the rules I know about sound, and uh, Dado will agree with me on this, apply equally to, uh, to uh, picture. So that's cool. So go, go along to Gunhill Studios and we will put what we can about our show. There's things we can say and things we can't about various things we're shooting, but we will always put as much behind the scenes up as possible. And I'm also gonna put some graded stuff up so you can see before and after grades 
and what we're using and what we're working on. So ask anything. If I've got the time, can't guarantee I will answer you the same day, but I will always try and answer.